Chester Axe here at Hot Jet USA. Happy Friday to you. It is a Friday today here in beautiful Utah. I'm going to go over uh, safety and operations on our Hot Jet 2 in an enclosed trailer. I call this the skinny boy. It's 5 foot wide, 16 foot long. It's easy to transport. Uh, the wider ones, uh, we have, you have to haul them out. You've got to drive them out. So this is a great little trailer to get around, easy to transport. I'm going to go ahead back up front. And we'll start at the beginning of this trailer here. When your equipment arrives, you will have a manual, safety manual and book. It's uh, great to go over this before you do anything. Look at it, check it over, read it. It's uh, your safety operations, uh, the manual, parts book, uh, jetter book. I should take it out and make it easier, eh? So you got your operations, you got your jetter book. In this binder is a, a parts book, uh, motor manuals. You're going to want to go over that. The uh, 35 horsepower hot water power plant enclosed with a uh, high temp vent and this uh, engine exhaust. We exhausted out the floor. We do put a 90 at the bottom of the trailer so it doesn't blow straight on the ground. This will get smoking hot so be careful. There are warning signs on the inside of this trailer denoting you know, safety. This is going to be hot when the uh, burner's on. So you're going to want to read your safety and operations. Uh, just real quickly to go over some of the uh, apparatuses on this. Uh, got your Wayne burner, thermostat. This is a tiny tack. A lot of people call me and uh, when this starts to flash they think something's going on with this. But this is just to tell you when to lube and oil. It'll flash every 25 hours. On off for the burner. You got uh, your regulator. Your uh, It's like a PRV in a house. You plumbers will know what that is. But there's your regulator. This is an accumulator which is like an expansion tank that will absorb some of the uh, back pressure when you shut the machine off. Beautiful Vanguard 35 horsepower bulletproof engine. I've been here going on four years and never had one fail so they're beautiful engines. Uh, in here you've got your uh, windshield washer fluid antifreeze tank and your soap injection tank. You got your uh, valves that control the main tank and the antifreeze tank. Tiger tail, this is a great hose protector. When you're putting this down the drain, your hose go in here and this will protect your hose from getting cut. <clears throat> Got your toolbox, it's gonna have all your nozzles, gloves, goggles, nozzles, the warthog. The hot jet tube comes with the warthog. And we're gonna go ahead and go onto the back and go over how this thing's gonna run. The Hot Jet 2 comes equipped with a remote that you can uh, start up to 600 feet away. It's a pretty powerful uh, remote uh, made by Control Chief. The, uh, the engine key has to be off. Then this uh, remote will start. You'll push it once to engage it and a second time to start it. I'm not going to do that right now. We'll run it a little bit later. So this will run the engine and the burner. Uh, burner on, burner off. This remote will, will run them both from, from away. So before you start anything, you want to make sure you got water in the tank. I'm going to start from the basics, gang, because sometimes it happens you get ahead of yourself and you forget to put water in the tank. It happens. So make sure you got water in the tank. Once you got water in the tank, this is the start position. It's called the bypass position. This handle is in the bypass mode. So when you start the engine, instead of the water chugging around all the hose reels, it's going to be bypassed back into the tank. Helps the engine start easier. Let it get a little bit warmed up. Once it's warmed up, as you turn this up, you are now, hose reels are live. The jetter hose reel and your washdown hose reel, they are now live. Make sure these valves are off. I got ahead on myself, gang. Before you, uh, when you're in your bypass mode and you get ready to start, make sure these valves are in the off position. Because if they're not, and someone has the valve open, and you start the machine, water's going to come out of whichever hose reel is open. So make sure these are off when you're starting. Once you've started and you're ready to wash or jet, you're going to put this in the live reel mode. Now these, live, these reels are now live. Very simple. Whichever reel you're going to use, if you're going to be washing, that's your wash reel. If you're going to be jetting, that is your jet reel. And it's really that simple. Got your bypass mode, got your live mode. <clears throat> this is a soap valve for soap injection of our great Total C product. Great lubricant, deodorizer, 
it actually helps your jetting and smells nice too, believe it or not. Throttle, this is the throttle. So this is where you'll throttle it up or down. As you turn it counterclockwise, you're going to increase the speed of that engine. And here's your tack. Now this tack won't zero out when you shut the motor off. It'll stop at two or three. When you go start it again, it'll zero back out and come up to RPM. Hose reel has a variable speed reversing switch. This little slow or fast, however fast you want to rewind it. And this is your thumb switch to control that. Very strong reel. If you need to pull back under load, you can do it. I kind of suggest help the hose along a little bit to take the drag off the motor. But if you've got a clean coming backwards, this hose reel will do it. Just set your speed and push the button and let her come back. This is your drain valve for your water tank when you're done for the day, or especially if it's winter time and you got to drain it. This is a fast, this is the same valve they use in the RVs, the dump stations. So it's a dump valve. Open that up and, and water will drain. When you are jetting, want to make another safety note. You got to drain. If you can pull this hose out and you can stick it in the drain like this, there's a good possibility that hose could turn around and come back on you. If that's the case, you're going to put what we call a stinger on the back of this nozzle. You're going to put this onto this hose, so this now will not come back on you. It's going to catch the, the side of the pipe. So another great safety the rule of thumb is if you can put that in the line that way, you're going to put a stinger on it. Also, again, got ahead of myself. I apologize. Make sure there's a sign up here. Safety glasses, gloves, a good pair of shoes, very vital. It's even better if you have matching glasses, shirt, and gloves. You're a little safer that way. So I'm getting ready to start this with the remote. There's a switch back here. Little green light says that we are now in the remote operation. Key is going to be off. So we are ready to start. Go back to the back again. Just check over one more time to make sure I got... Turn your heat to 120. That's our maximum that we recommend. Yes. So we take that on. Yeah, we're going to set the thermostat at 120. That's what we recommend. Okay. Come back here, check my valves. Valves are off. Bypass mode. We should be ready to start. Click it once. Second time to start it. She's idling good. As you can see, the tachometer went back to zero. It's back to where the RPMs are now. As I turn it counterclockwise, the, the engine will start to rev up. So we're ready to jet. I make sure the valves are off as I turn this into the live mode. So now we are live, ready to jet. I'll turn this up a little more. Open up the jetter valve. And we are jetting. about 3200 rpm we're running at about 3500 psi for the burner operation we're going to do the same thing you can hear the burner came on i heard the flume we are now jetting with hot water Once you're done jetting, I recommend shutting the burner off and cool that coil down, temper it with some cold water. Throttle down the jetter if you're by it. If you're not, you're away from it, you can just shut it off if you have to. If you're by the jetter, you can throttle it down. Remote shuts it off. Be sure to always remember to shut your jetter valve back off. Put your other valve back into bypass and easy star mode. Relieves all that pressure. Tooks all the pressure out of the system. And you're ready for your next job. Hey there, Chester here again. Going to talk about antifreeze. Uh, we're going to start out uh, with the assumption that we have antifreeze in these hoses already. Hopefully both of them, if you've used either one of them, you're going to antifreeze them both. 
But right now we're going to go with there is antifreeze in the system in this house to how to unantifreeze and capture the fluid. We do recommend windshield washer fluid. It works great. It's got methanol in it. Won't freeze. A little less money than the RV antifreeze at 30 bucks a gallon. So when you're ready to unantifreeze, two ways you can do it. I'm going to walk this up to the tank and put it in the tank. But if you wanted to put it into a bucket, you surely could to recapture that fluid. So you're going to come over here. And I'm going to, uh, Mo's going to show that camera. That handle to the left is pointing to where the antifreeze tank is. That is when you antifreezed it and you're drawing the fluid from that washer fluid concentrate tank. So now we're going to unantifreeze and you're going to turn this valve back to the main tank because now we're going to flush fresh water through the system, which is going to push the antifreeze out. So you can open up the tank and you put your hose in this tank. And you're going to run it just like you're ready to jet. Um, I would hold it up. I have it just in the tank to show you. But because you're going to want to see when you are done with the antifreeze, which should be a color, it'll be pink or blue. When it starts to turn white, you're going to shut your system off. With the remote, hit the off button, shut it off, pull this hose away, and you've recaptured that fluid. Now pay attention to how many times you do this because if you're pushing fresh water through it, eventually you'll have more water than your antifreeze solution. So be careful of how you dilute that. And like I said, you can also do it in a bucket. So that is how to unantifreeze. You're literally going to take your hose out and put it in the tank or put it in a bucket. Put your system into jet mode, which is the main water tank. Turn your system on, push the antifreeze fluid out of the hose and into your antifreeze tank or a bucket, whichever works for you. And that is how you unantifreeze. We'll go over how to antifreeze next. Okay, Chester here again. We're going to go over how to winterize, how to antifreeze the system. So you're done either for the day or maybe you're going between a long haul of a job and you're in, uh, you know, sub freezing weather. You're going to winterize or antifreeze. And again, over here at the front of the tank, or the trailer, sorry, you're going to flip your main valve to point towards your antifreeze tank. That is now going to draw solution from the antifreeze tank. And literally, the way to think about it is you're going to do a jet job, but you're going to run antifreeze through the system. That's the basic concept of it. So now you're going to pull fluid from the antifreeze tank. And you're going to get ready just like you're, uh, you're gonna, you were going to jet, like we spoke about before. Your system's going to be in bypass mode, which is okay because you do want to antifreeze the bypass line also. If you don't antifreeze that bypass line and it freezes, your system won't start because there'll be a blockage and you'll have too much back pressure and the motor won't want to run. So you're going to start your machine in the bypass mode. Just don't run it too long because you'll put all your antifreeze in the main tank. But you're going to flip this up to your jet position. Now these hose reels are live and you're going to open up your jet hose and you're going to let it run. You're going to let that fluid run out until the color changes. You have antifreeze coming through it. You're going to shut it off. Then you're going to come over here to this hose reel. If you've used it, if there's any water in it at all, you're going to want to do the same thing with your wash down hose. You're going to open up that valve. You're going to let the fluid come out until it starts to turn a color and you're going to shut it off. And that is how you antifreeze. Thank you.